Chris Trainer, penetration tester at Black Hills Information Security. And today I'm gonna to be covering some Arp Suite extensions. If you haven't already seen the previous videos, there'll be a link provided above or below or left or right, somewhere in the description for you to go back and see those. So this time around, we're gonna be talking about RetireJS as a Burp extension. We're gonna be interacting with a Docker deployed local instance of OWASP's Juice Shop, which is a vulnerable web application that can be used as a nice testing playground to try things out in. A nice legal great place for you to bounce around and find a bunch of vulnerabilities. It has challenges, a whole bunch of stuff. You should definitely check it out. So RetireJS is a fairly simple extension in, in its concept. It is kind of described right in its name. Its purpose is to try to identify retired JavaScript libraries that your web application may be loading or dependent on, right? Uh, if you're a developer, you know the painful, the painful world of making sure that your dependencies are up to date, that your dependencies, if you ever try to upgrade one from one major version to another or even minor versions to another, it can be really painful. RetireJS is a way for security practitioners like penetration testers to identify if your web application is using any outdated and potentially vulnerable third-party JavaScript libraries. And I'm going to show you how that works. So here we have RetireJS open in, open in Burp. We're in the BAP store right now. So this is a brief explanation of what it, what it does. It's a overall system impact as well as some author information, a link out to the source information. And if you haven't installed it, you would just have a little install button right here. Click it. That's it. It'll install, it'll load. This is a burp extension that does not add any new tabs to your burp UI. But RetireJS adds a passive analysis capability to burp. And we'll show how that works here. I'm going to clear the history for burp. I have my OWASP juice, juice shop, local installation loaded up. I'm going to reload the website and you see all of these pretty colors and lines going by really fast in my burp tool. That's all the requests that the OWASP juice shop just did by me doing a hard refresh on it, which means clearing cache, doing all that business. I haven't touched anything with the web app at this point. I'm going to jump over to the target. And I'm going to select this target right here, which is our OWASP. And I'm going to look right here. Vulnerable version of the library jQuery is found and vulnerable JavaScript dependency. Those are two separate things. I'm calling those out specifically for the, for the following reason. You can see that the top one says jQuery 2.2.4. Bottom one says jQuery 2.2.4. Those are the same numbers, right? But the minor difference that you may wind up noticing, let me expand things here so that you can see a little bit better, is that there is information right here on this top one that states this particular advisory appeared because of a burp extension. And it gives the extension name right there, RetireJS. Now you can see that it called it out for the same jQuery version being used inside of this phone web application in both reasons. Why is the second one not calling out that it came from RetireJS? For the simple fact, it didn't. Uh, similar to the way that you know, iPhone and, uh, and Apple and Google and their device for Android, they have app stores. People build apps, they put them out there. If they're popular enough and good enough and they provide great value, you will see Google and, and Apple eventually make those built-in features. It is a similar situation here with RetireJS. The reason I chose to talk about this is that sometimes there can be disjoints. Sometimes RetireJS, I've seen, has picked up on vulnerable libraries that Burp is not, and it's the and it's default capabilities. Sometimes Burp picks up on stuff that RetireJS does not. This is an extension that I typically keep loaded up as a default at all times because it helps do passive analysis, very low system impact while you're testing, and it can provide insight into gap areas very early on. Like I said, all I've done with this with this application is load it. And it already found vulnerable versions and possible CVEs for me to look into. So it provides some nice issue details, links, even affected versions to help you guide your development team 
around what you have to patch to to resolve these issues. Another reason to call out that I keep this loaded up, these links between what Tire.js gives you and what Burp gives you can differ. You want to try to get the, the whole picture and all of the information you can, especially if you're a pen tester writing up a finding. Give your report as much information as you can, as much reference material as you can to help teams resolve the issue. This was a real quick one, Retire.js. It's super simple to load. I'll pull it back up here so that it's like there on the screen. Super simple to load. Great to have as an always on default, very low system impact.